Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. So this is now part four of our tracker, I guess, mini build series with our egg finder. Um, so the last couple of videos you've seen me working out of this little box, well, I decided this little box was too little and decided to remix uh, this wonderful design because I'm extra and like to be extra. It's, so mine's, mine's extra big. And, and by extra big, I mean it's just literally like a couple inches wider than it used to be. I, I'm trying to not drop the old electronics out. Like it's, it's just a, a little bit bigger than, than what it was before. So like the, the old one could fit inside the new one. Like it's, it's taller, it's, it's wider, it's all around a bigger box. Um, the whole point of this is that I decided I wanna go ahead and at some point buy the buy myself another egg finder lcd and add in all the uh, telemetry details which i was kind of starting to tear out of that box's capabilities um so we've got all of that starting to go in and now it's time to really take the next step on getting all of it ready for our testing that we're going to do uh, a little bit later in this video and we've got to get all of our electrical setup stuff done. So I'm wanting to power this entire box off one 2S LiPo. So I've got this 2S 6200 milliamp hour 50C LiPo battery. It's a really big battery. It would run this thing for like a month because I use absolutely no draw. But that's, that's kind of the point. I want to run it for like ever. So the egg finder runs off the 2S just fine. My T3 that holds the third mini bay um, in here does not. That, that little turd runs off like four volts. It likes a 1S LiPo. So I bought this DC to DC uh, step down converter. It's a buck converter is what it is um, that we will be able to put, put the seven volts in and output the uh, three volts. So it's got a range of input from three to 40 volts and output range of 1.25 to 35 volts. So we'll have to hook up a voltmeter to the end of it and uh, do some checking. Um, one of the things we are going to end up doing is we will have to replace the leads on the end of this battery because I, I hate these T connectors. They're, they're awful to work with. So we're going to replace them with um, some EC3s connectors that I bought because I like the EC3 pretty well. Um, if you're not using EC3, I really like the uh, XT60. All right, so some things changed on this build as we were going along. Um, stuff got a little more complicated, and so... I stopped filming some things and some of the footage I did film I misplaced. So we're just going to kind of start from where we're at with the finished build and I'm going to go through what I ended up doing. So I have gone ahead and actually added a second LCD screen like I had planned to. So currently inside the box, if I can get this open, I've got two egg finder LCDs. One has the GPS module and one has a voice module on it. The one with the voice module is designed for talking to my altimeters and I use it on my egg timer uh, quantum and quark. So that's what those are designed for and that is coming apart a little bit. Good thing I opened this up. Um, some things aren't staying together. Great as I've been jostling around. I also have this third port here that has my um, RRC3 T3 tracker. Um, that for the moment has stopped working. So I haven't quite figured out what's wrong with it, but I still do have the integrated power bus to be able to power it if needed. So that's kind of how everything mounts in the backside here real quick. You can see the LCD. It mounts with four screws on each and the uh, other devices mount here. Um, again, the links for these, uh, this file and the original file are in the description below. Um, you can go find them and download them for yourself. On the outside, we have our power switches, our respective programming switches, and our backlight switch. So programming is how we move around in it. 
um, and are able to change settings slash view different settings within the LCDs. Backlight literally just turns on a light to let you see it. So within what we did for powering this, um, there is stuff that looks like it's plugged in. I promise you it's not actually plugged in. Uh, I've got a battery tray here, so the battery locks into a tray there. I was going to try and make it such that like I had a power output here and um, a balancing cable as well as two um, PWM outputs so that I could program altimeters and stuff while this thing was fully assembled. Uh, I've run into some issues where I've noticed it just doesn't quite work with the general layout. Like here's the PWM for programming the egg finder. Um, but like other things plug into that same port for your audio. And so I wasn't able to actually set the other side up for programming. And then you can see here, I've got this is not two wires taped together. I promise they're individually taped off and then wrapped together. Um, this was where I was going to try and charge from, but that just kind of became a bad idea. And then this is currently where power comes in to the unit. And it goes into this massive like block of wires that are soldered together and then heat shrunk so that they don't move because I didn't want anything happening. Um, there are two cables that come up and then they go into my respective power wires um, here and here. Again, this power wire is way overkill, but I wanted to be able to handle the output of my battery if I ever wanted to take this power setup and use it on something else. But then again, it comes over and I've got a buck converter here, which you can see I put a bunch of hot glue over the terminals so no one can like touch the two terminals while it's plugged in and shock themselves. And it's got a proper output. Um, these, I believe they're JST connectors, are what I use for all of my 1S LiPo equipment. And then I'm trying to do all of my uh, 2S in XT30 is what I'm currently got the setup at. Um, I did try to standardize connectors across the board. Let me see my electronics bin, what I've got. Um, yeah, so I've got JSTs on all of my 1S LiPos, and then on these really nice uh, 2S tattoo batteries I found, I have uh, XT30s, and I'm trying to use XT30s standard across the board in all of my stuff, um, except for this box is the one area where I have deviated from that. So this is basically just a giant power splitter and even if I found the footage on it, there's no reason for me to toss it in here. Like you plug power in here and power comes out one of these three spots. But again, I did find out that even another issue with potentially trying to charge from this is that I'd be back feeding power <laughs> into this whole system. And that's just an awful idea. Uh, the buck converter at the moment is not being used because I think I fried one part of my um, MissileWorks T3 tracker so it unfortunately at the moment is down. But if you ever have any questions on the T3 tracking system, I am fairly intimate with it and have been using it for the last several years. Um, I did change the battery connector over on my battery. Uh, I have had some issues where it has not wanted to stay plugged in, like that is coming out at the moment and I really hate it. Um, so I am needing to kind of double check and rework some of that stuff so that it does not keep coming apart on me. But real quick, I'm gonna show you how this whole thing powers up and then I'll sh jump to the infield demo I filmed at the last rocket launch. So to power it up, oh, I'm sorry, that is my bad. We should not be powering that up. So one of the few rules of telemetry and um, RF electronics is to not run without an antenna. You can actually fry your transmitter by trying to run without an antenna load on. That's part of the standard rules for radio as well. So getting antennas on here is a good safety feature. Otherwise, you will potentially risk damaging. So again, we power on. Um, we've got some data here that's saying egg finder, LCD. Um, we're getting battery data. Um, if I were to hit the backlight button, you can see there's the backlight, which is actually helping us see it right now. So now it's trying to wait for a tracker. It's never going to find a tracker. Um, just a simple fact. This is the programming button and then power switch. 
Um, and I can show that the same thing works for the other one to show that they're both able to be powered on. And so I can, oh, I forgot the backlight on that, did not hold. I had an issue, I need to replace this button at some point. But there's the backlight button working. Um, Hoop, I jumped it into receiver config by accident. Um, not a big deal, but. So that's how the two systems work together at the moment. Um, I'm actually looking at rebuilding this yet again. Uh, there's a few things I don't like about how it interfaced. Like I do need to replace this switch and there's some little facts there. But real quick, we'll jump to infield and show you how the tracker portion of it led us straight to um, the rocket when we were trying to do tracking. Uh, my original plan had been to film me uh, chasing my wife around our yard, um, but that just did not come together before I needed to use it. And so I decided I would actually film the infield use of it. Um, when we were at the pad, all we did, um, actually not even at the pad, I had the tracker connected before we even went to the rail. So I powered it up and made sure I got all the TRS connections um, and everything else. Right, you can check out the Egg Finder Mini build video to see how the Egg Finder connects on this side. Also, please check out the Egg Timer Quantum video where we will show how the telemetry side connects and transmits telemetry data. Uh, that video may not be out at the time of this video's release, but it will be coming soon. Alrighty, so uh, plan was to just play hide and go seek with it uh, for the Egg Finder, but we're actually going to go ahead and do this track uh, in the field on a rocket. So we've been actually tracking for a little while. Um, this is the box and we've got the egg finder in it. I'm gonna see if I can even get this to show up on screen. Um, you can see it says like 6,000 feet there and it's got arrows. 600. Uh, 600 feet, sorry. Um, so we've gotten really close to it and we're just gonna continue to follow the arrows even though we can see the rocket just over here. Um, but basically we followed the rocket from the pad and we drove most of the distance out to it because it was almost 9,000 feet out and so we're just following the track on our way out here oh and there we just regain connectivity to the rockets tracker so that's the standard beeping sound you should get when you're connected to the tracker and then you get a distance readout and then we were trying to pull telemetry from the rocket, but that has not worked once. Hey, main's out. There was some concern that main may not have come out, but we got 470 feet and a direction telling us to go straight ahead. Um, usually when you get within 100 feet, the direction starts to go a little wonky and gives you com some really weird numbers, but usually you can see what you're trying to track by that point in time. So, it tells us what we're looking for really well. But just kind of keeping you guys on the box, even though I'm walking straight for the rocket. So. Now we're within about 300 feet. Things usually start to get a little odd within about that 100, 250 feet range. Although it's doing really well right now. So we've got the rocket right there and our tracker quite successfully led us to our rocket. So that's really simply how that works. Um, and hopefully you guys will find it handy, learn how to use it. Um, it is very important whenever you turn on your egg finder that you turn on the rocket side first, then the base station side so that they connect properly. But there is our beautiful rocket. Thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing if you'd like to see more of this comment. It really helps us out a ton. I'll see you all in the next video.